Omega-3 fats in your brain. This is a follow-up on a longer show that I did all about fish oil. In that show, I talked about the omega-6, omega-3 fat ratio. We tend to have too much omega-6 now. We need omega-6, but not too much. And we don't have enough omega-3. About 119 years ago, scientists agreed that we probably had a one-to-one -one ratio somewhere around there. If you're four to one or better, you're in the safe zone. If you're 15 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3, you're at the risk of a chronic disorder or problem. The average American is now 25 to 1. That's a problem. Here's a couple of follow-up articles. First off is brain lipids and disorders in biological psychiatry. Wow. Okay. Uh, E.R. Skinner is the editor. 2002, Chapter 5, title. Omega-3 fats in depressive disorders and violence, the context of evolution and cardiovascular health. So this is um, a chapter with uh, 40 pages, 326 references in this little synopsis here I'm going to give you. There's been a hundredfold increase in major depression since 1910 in the U.S. This same increase also occurred in nine other industrialized nations. Schizophrenics have a ratio of AA to EPA, arachidonic acid, the omega-6, EPA, the omega-3, of 70 to 1. 4 to 1 is safe, 15 to 1 is not good, 25 to 1 is the average American, 70 to 1 is a schizophrenic. By the way, we have seen that ratio from a colleague of mine, the worst he's seen is 75 to 1. Increases of omega-6 trans fatty acids alter membrane biophysical properties. Reduction of omega-3 fats also alters membrane biophysical properties. Alcohol consumption and smoking both oxidize or degrade omega-3 double bonds, oxidizing, making them not function the way they're supposed to. Docosahexanoic acid, DHA, another omega-3, increases the production of serotonin and dopamine. Selective serotonin reuptake uh, inhibitors, SSRIs, dopamine, dopamine reuptake inhibitors, and all those medications. Omega-3 increases the production of serotonin and dopamine. Sounds like we should probably do that for any, any human with a brain, particularly any person suffering from some sort of a psychiatric disorder. That should be tried. Something to talk to your doctor about, I think. Reduced omega-3 fats is linked to the following. So if you don't have enough omega-3s, it's linked to the following. Homicide, aggression, aggression, hostility, sudden cardiac death, impulsiveness, ADD, alcoholism, violent behavior, depression, arrhythmias, suicide, cardiovascular disease, chronic renal disease, increased atherosclerosis, elevated serum homocysteine, increased inflammation, altered function of the HPA axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis, your stress axis, if you will. Increased pro-inflammatory cytokines, PGE2, again, systemic inflammation. Altered function of the sympathetic nervous system, not a good thing. An insufficiency of omega-3 fatty acids, specifically EPA and DHA, aggravates every risk factor that has been described as linking major depression to an increased risk of cardiovascular mortality. Your brain goes bad and your heart goes bad when you don't have enough omega-3s. The brain selectively concentrates DHA into synaptic neuronal membranes, which means your brain really needs a lot of omega-3s. And if you don't have enough of those, brain cells don't work right. That's why that huge list of stuff is there without enough omega-3s. Here's another reference I, I need to mention to you. World Review of Nutrition and Dietetics. The editor is Artemis Simopoulos, MD. Prevention of coronary heart disease from the cholesterol hypothesis to the omega-6, omega-3 balance. Uh, 2007 is when this was written. An unbalanced intake of N6 over uh, omega-6 or omega-3 polyunsaturated fats favors production of potent hormone-like acosinoids 
whose actions lead to inflammatory and thromb thrombotic lipid mediators and altered cellular signaling and gene expression, which are major risk factors for coronary heart disease, cancers, and shorter longevity. What did I just say? If you don't have enough omega-3s, it epigenetically affects your gene expression, leading to trouble with your heart, trouble with your brain, cardiovascular mortality, and so forth. It affects all those major systems. Excessive intake of linoleic acid, which is an omega-6, and relative omega-3 fatty acid deficiency increases the proportion of, of omega-6 precursors in tissue phospholipids fats, leading to in enhanced inflammatory thrombotic and arrhythmic events, which are proposed to be major mediators for fatal diseases. What did I just say again? What are these wonderful people talking about here? Too much omega-6, not enough omega-3, you get coronary problems leading to death. Linoleic acid, omega-6, appears to be involved in both atherogenesis and carcinogenesis. If you have too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, you clog up your arteries and get heart attacks and stroke, and your heart goes bad, and you get more cancer. Increase in linoleic acid in the past several decades is a major risk factor for many types of cancer. Catch this now. Now we're going to wrap in cholesterol, total cholesterol, into this whole thing. So basically, I just told you, too much omega-6, not enough omega-3. Bad for your brain, bad for your heart, you get more cancer. No benefit seems to come from the effects to limit dietary cholesterol intake or to lower total cholesterol values below approximately 260 among general populations. No benefit from avoiding dietary cholesterol or trying to lower cholesterol, which means drugs, exercise, whatever it is. Cancer and all causes of death tend to be lower for higher total cholesterol groups among general populations, at least up to 280. Cancer and deaths go down when total cholesterol is 260 to 280, or up to that, okay? Which we're told in this country, oh my gosh, it's 180, it's gonna be 180, now they're talking about 160. Researchers have known for uh, 12, 13 years now, no, 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 yeah, no, no, don't do that, don't do that. Now we know that there is no reason for the majority of people to lower their total cholesterol because high total cholesterol is actually associated with longevity. Except for familial hypocholesterolemia and those with related general uh, ge genetic disorders, we do not recommend general populations with total cholesterol values below 280 to limit their intake of cholesterol or to lower their total cholesterol values. I'm not telling you what to do. You got to check with your doctor and make decisions on your own. But these people, along many others, are saying driving that total cholesterol number down is not doing good things. Up to 280 is what they're suggesting is, is you're still safe. Familial hypercholesterolemia is really, really small number of people. So consider this as you're looking and considering what you're eating and your omega-6 to omega-3 fat ratio. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller.